right, welcome to the GDOE Varsity Esports League. I'm your host, Ken. I'm joined by my co-commentators today. We got Aiku and Sly. Welcome to the commentary table, guys. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having us. So this is the first so, ever time that we're going to play a, uh, or cast a GDOE match. This is uh, Meet 3. Uh, and these are a battle between the top two teams. We got GW versus Tizen. Is this an official game right now? Yes, they're yeah. starting right now. Right All off right. the bat. And we already see that Renan's actually cornering himself, trying to wait out his opponent's next move. But Matt just goes in without any hesitation, actually. Yeah, Matt, he definitely has to be careful when he's approaching, since uh, since Ken has a lot of very quick and powerful burst options. So, But he's going to be switching right over to Ivysaur, so I guess Matt, you figured, okay, maybe let's switch up the strategy. Let's try to be a little more defensive. A little more safe. Ooh. Uh oh, but this is gonna be a death? Yeah. Oh my goodness. He actually went straight to the stratosphere with that one too. Once again, he has to be careful what kind of moves he's throwing out, otherwise he could be punished heavily, die, you know, at the really early percent. Yeah, Ken is such an explosive character. If he hits you with the proper combo move then or like combo starter, then he can end up getting an easy kill from it. Yeah, indeed. Renan playing Ken and representing Teeds and, and Machu playing the Pokemon Poke Trainer. Uh, he's Charizard oh, right now. He's Maddie representing GW. The flamethrower. Yeah, I, I think up. that is one thing that Machu should start uh, should also take advantage of when Ken or Ryu gets hit. They don't have a lot of great recovery options off stage since their recovery their two recovery moves are fairly linear, especially with the Tatsu and the Shoryu. It's just like mostly the next just label play. straight next horizontal, label straight play. vertical. So. Uh, Magic can easily just use a lot of his tools as Poker Trainer, just kind of get really uh, early uh, gimps. Right. And right now, oh no, this is not where you want to be against Ken at ledge. Ken just has way too many options to cover so much of what you want to do, whether you want to roll, whether you want to jump, or even just do get up attack or neutral get up. He can press one move down tilt and then you, you have to be so careful on your timing yeah especially with the auto turnaround function that they have okay so matt has a huge oh. deficit oh almost got oh, no. down there but I, I maybe the connection the... you know made him a little unconfident about it or it might have made his input that. actually yeah could be oh. uh oh oh that's, that's a death. death yes oh okay very convincing game for renan and at first it was going okay, but Machu got way too hasty. And he has, he's going to have to change up his game plan. He has to be very careful, very conservative of what kind of moves he wants to throw out. Otherwise, he can get just he can just get blasted. Oh yeah. Okay, so right now they're probably just they're probably discussing their stage bans or their stage choices. I don't know, like, which stage would you want to go against Ken or Ryu, you know? I would definitely avoid Final Destination. Uh, not only do both uh, Ken and Ryu do very well on that stage, but I think it's also, like, a personal preference for Renan. He very much likes it. He really, really likes his flat stages. So I think Machu, I think since it's Machu's choice, he's probably going to want to pick something like, I don't know, Battlefield or... Yoshi's Island, where he at least he has platforms to change up his approach or, you know, run away. Right. I feel like with Renan, he's probably loving FD, you know, uh, Final Destination over the other stages like Triplats, only because he doesn't really specialize in doing those uh, ladder combos that a lot of other Kens and Ryus can do. He just more so stays on the ground. And I think that's something that Machu could be using to his advantage, especially with a character like uh, Ivysaur, who does like his vertical and or yeah, his vertical kills with his up air and his up B, and he can also like start camping around the platforms with uh, Razor Leaf. Oh yeah, uh, Razor Leaf itself is actually gonna just halt his momentum and make sure that he stays in one place from time to time. He can't just move around whenever he wants, and he can't press whatever button he wants as long as he has that one projectile out. Okay, same characters. I think it really. I think uh, Matchy's going to stick with his guns. I I agree with it. You know, I could, I definitely see uh, this being possible with Pokemon Trainer if he was going to make a comeback. Oh wow! 
Brandon with him. My mind is clear. He says no disruptions. Ooh. Yeah, I like those little taunt messages. They, you know, kind of intimidate your opponent like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. But that's Approach definitely a source of confidence for him, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, switching right to Ivysaur. I think Matthew just figured, okay, yeah, I'm not going to try to be too aggressive. I'm just going to go straight for the projectile user. Oh, that was so... Shield pressure. That was so dangerous already. Being in the corner against Ken, it just, it's so much of a detriment if you ever want to take a stock. But right now he has a juggle on him. Yeah, again, the platform is helping uh, Matthew get that little up air. I think that's also going to be another thing. Like I said, Ivysaur loves his vertical kills. So I think... Oh, Cat <laughs> jumped in with the DP. Amazing oh my catch goodness. by Renan. Yeah, he, he pinned the point on the map. And he said, yeah, you're jumping right here. But is that... Oh, no. That's a stop. Too hasty. I do like what he was going for with the Flare Blitz. Since it yeah. does technically count as two hits. And it would actually go right through the focus attack. But I think I'm not sure what happened. Like you just kind I of think, like phased right through. Yeah, I think he might have just misplaced it because maybe he tried doing it a bit like later and he did it just so early. I don't know what happened there. Oh man, good from yeah, Matthew from not a, actually a lot of work. That that honestly oh. might be it. Wow. That Jeez. was so quick. Oh. Wow, that was a quick set. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I I can definitely see the nerves from Matthew in that one match after he lost the first game he just crumbled i think another thing is uh matt matt you already knows what kind of player renan is uh on guam renan is actually ranked number eight on the island so i think another that's also kind of contributing to matt's like you know i guess like nerves or something yeah can you explain that matchup guys as a you know like a newcomer to the game uh like with that stage that looks like a pretty generic like looking stage and, and lineup does do either one of those characters have a distinct advantage over the other like so we were just saying that uh, a character like ken really likes flat platform like no platform stages because mm -hmm. that uh, most of his combos and kill confirms are they don't really utilize platforms all that much another thing is because they have such quick burst options you have to be very careful with how you approach this kind of a character so if you have a uh, battlefield or you have Pokemon Stadium, then you, you at least have the platforms to mix up your approach to, you know, play a little campy and defensive. And uh, a character like Ivysaur does like his, uh, does like platforms for combos. Same thing with Squirtle. Yeah. Um, both these characters can take so much mileage from getting platform combos, but uh, Ivysaur and Squirtle a lot more than Ryu slash Ken. Uh, but it honestly feels like more of a neutral stage between these two characters since uh, neither of them really had any distinct advantages here I feel like hmm. okay so I guess uh, we're just as we're waiting for the next two players I believe it's going to be premium versus let's see the lineup Premium versus Christian. Okay. So it doesn't look like oh. Christian's in the lobby right now. Yeah. So yeah, I think him and Renan are playing on the same account. They're brothers, right? These two are brothers. I oh, think yeah. so. That's right. Okay. So the Christian, he gets yeah, the benefit that... of playing with one of Guam's best. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot oh, yeah, of good for free sure. practice. Oh, here we go. We're about to jump oh, into wow. it. Okay, Nash so it looks like we're going to have a, com a completely different uh, lineup of characters. Went oh, from yeah. Pokemon Trainer to Ken to Banjo versus Ness. So Banjo is a premium, and he's representing a GW. GW. And we have a Renan, yeah. or I'm sorry, we have Christian uh, playing on the same account, and he's representing Tizen, who is currently up 1-0. So oh yes, yeah. this is so a I've been battle. watching. Uh, yeah, I've been watching premium sets uh, over the course of you know the last few sessions, and I, I label, there's a lot of improvement label, in my opinion. Um, he, he's, I'd, I'd say he's making a little more smart plays with his grenade. He's being campy. I think one thing he needs to be careful with is just like his use of, of Wonder Wing. But that's just like what have I what I've observed over the past few sessions. Right. I feel like so, with oh. what he can do here, uh, premium. He just needs to make sure that he keeps Ness off stage. 
And just like that, if he keeps this up, then Ness will have no room to run around. He can't really make his pressure uh, on stage that he'd want. But, oh, he just gets the grab, and he just ends the stock like that. Yeah, we're, this is a completely different dynamic from the last set, since um, Pokemon Trainer and Ken kind of, like, are they're mostly, like, close combat characters. These two are mostly... These most these two characters mostly rely on their projectiles to get their damage and kills, so it's going to be an interesting uh, dynamic considering both of them are like heavy zoners. I feel like Ness is kind of an all rounder maybe because he he can zone yeah, but he also just can really get in your face and pressure you until he can net a stock like this. Just just yeah, look at all did. that percent he's already net. <laughs> Um, so in terms of the stage advantage, I mean, they're both zoning type of characters. So do, regardless of the outcome of this match, are they going to look to play a platformless stage like this one again? Or uh, uh, maybe more so for Banjo, because uh, with Banjo, he doesn't really benefit too highly from platforms compared to Ness, I feel like. There are some things that he can do to net him some kills, but they're very situational. Ness has very reliant, uh, nice. reliable conversions for it. Oh, yeah, and another now. thing with zoners is because they mostly rely off of the opponent approaching them, when you don't have any platforms, and let's say, like, you're being zoned out and your opponent's getting, uh, you know, or, sorry, you're zoning your opponent out and your opponent is getting a little hasty, mm -hmm. you know, they're at a deficit, since there are no platforms, there really is one way, only one way to approach, and that's forward. And zoners kind of re zoners rely on that. Uh, mm. They rely on your opponent making pretty bad decisions when it comes to approaching. Mm. Right. Oh, right now, that was a bit of a oh, bad wow. decision, too. He actually panicked and just kept drifting towards stage. He might have to actually reconsider what he's doing whenever he actually tries getting back. I think it's another thing that uh, Ness also likes. Uh, since there are no platforms, Ness really likes it when his opponent's directly above him, too, considering he has that PK Flash, he has PK Thunder, and he has that really good up air. Smart use of Wonder Wing. Uh, but Ooh. since Ness is really good at catching landings, I don't think Ness can make it back from. Oh, no, he can! Oh, he can, oh, but wow. he messed up the angle. Oh, that's so unfortunate. He actually just slightly messed up his angle when hitting himself with the PK Thunder. So he he actually ended up just slanting down instead of slanting upwards. That's so Do you think it was because Premium went in there and kind of disrupted the cycle uh, that he might have messed up the angle? Um, I think that might have been a bit of the case because seeing how he was so close to the PK Thunder, he didn't want to end up hitting him with it and he ends up dropping down into the Blast Zone anyways. Uh, so he was trying to hurry up and uh, get back to the ledge as soon as he could. But yeah, I think it was up. also the threat. I think it was also the threat of premium just choosing to get hit by the PK Thunderball because that does end up uh, putting Ness at the free fall. So, so Christian will since he, Christian lost, he will have uh, the decision to pick what stage he wants to play on. We'll see what he picks. Um, and currently. It looks like GW has the chance to tie this up at one and a piece if um, his opponent can win this set, if Premium can win this set. Oh, yeah. Right now it's looking a bit close between Christian and Premium. I, from what I've seen with Banjo and Ness, it, it really looks ugly once either of them are off stage. And Ness... Oh, what? I'm surprised he went with Doc here. <laughs> Dr. Mario, okay. Wow. I think they're going over to Town and City. I'm just looking at the server chat right now. And Premium with the color counter pick, okay. Yeah, yeah. This is my true form, okay. Yeah, you're right, Town and City. Okay, so Dr. Mario, Dr. Mario, I don't know what the, I don't know what the logic behind that one was. Maybe. I Maybe he's just more comfortable on this stage with Dr. Mario? Yeah, it could, it could be like a character character stage, like a comfort pick. Mm. Okay, but currently these two are actually just zoning each other out, forcing each other to approach, but neither one of them are actually budging at the moment until he got hasty. <laughs> yeah, decides to like just run in with a dash attack instead. 
Oh, punishing that F smash. I'm not sure what Premium was also doing at the F smash. Yeah, yeah oh kind of landing a little close. Yeah, I'm kind of not too sure about Premium's landing options. You saw in the last game, he even landed straight in into a PK flash. This time yeah. he's kind of just jumping in with a grenade. Yeah, he's being overly aggressive, and it's really showing in this game too. Every time he was landing, he was getting hit for it, and he hasn't actually uh, done anything like drift outward uh, to avoid, you know, his opponent or anything. He's just been trying to like hit them for every moment he's off stage or in a juggle situation. Yeah, but that Wonder Wing just clutching out so many stocks for him. Yep. I think the way. Uh, oh, that was a. Okay, I was about to. I was about to. I was about to compliment his uh, use of the Wonder Wing, but he just kind of throws out a <laughs> random one. Yeah. Okay. He really okay, could want to take the stock, but he actually catches his jump, maybe? No, he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying, as I'm watching premium sets, like, uh, the way he's catching jumps is actually, it's, I don't know, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, oh, he, he knows the conversion, oh. though. Okay, nice, nice. Almost gets the double egg, uh, double egg string. Okay, yeah, catching he, another, he, uh, catching another jump. Oh my goodness. Yeah, now, ooh, oh. now Christian has to be careful about how he's using his pills, because as you saw, like, he's been, like, full hopping, short hopping, and then doing a pill, and then Premium just saw right through it and just used the Wonder Wing to burst right through. Right, but now, now he's out. Now he's, yeah, most okay. people would say that Banjo just drops a few tears on the tier list once he loses Wonder Wing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, but currently he's actually still going in. He does not care. <laughs> I mean, he has he has a, he has almost a whole stock lead. So I think he yeah. I think he's thinking, okay, I can kind of afford to be a little reckless. Like right, I am out right. of Wonder Wing, so. Okay, nice grab from. Oh, here, I see what but... he's trying to do. He was uh, yeah. he was trying to catch uh, Christian jumping out of the burial. Yeah, because he actually has a 50-50 that goes on. It's either he can actually call out your mash and then hit you while you're you know bound uh getting thrown out of it, out of, the, out of the berry. Or he can actually just hit you with a smash attack, like forward smash or down smash, if you're not going to mash. Oh, I see what he's trying to go for. Trying to... Yeah, Premium definitely knows what he's doing with these grenades. I'm pretty sure, like, all these conversions are, like, in his muscle memory. It could, you know, or not really in his muscle memory, just, like, ingrained to the point where, like, he knows what he's doing with it. Because uh, every time he's throwing down a grenade, he's already trying to set up for something, like, good. Oh, wow. I'm surprised he didn't die from that, though. He hasn't been hit by that fair in a while, but he just gets hit by a raw sight, uh, down B. <laughs> Again, like, uh, Premium's landing options are kind of sketchy. You saw that right there. Tried approaching with an aerial, but he just gets tornadoed for it. Okay, back throw. Trying to toss him off stage, and that was too close for comfort. He was so close there. Oh, okay. Nice he has to be now. He has to be very careful about the Wonder Wings because yeah. Christian just caught it right there. Okay, does but one more throw might kill. do it. Ooh, catches the uppy with Ooh. the grenade. A very nice angle, and Premium takes it 2-0 over Christian. Very good stuff from Premium. He was actually doing so well with his aggression. He made sure that he didn't let his opponent breathe there. But I feel like he could have taken the game a bit quicker if he ended up just not landing towards Dr. Mario, as we saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So who do we have after this? Is so next, this? our last set. Would be Mask Knight versus Joshi Hila. Okay. So and Mask I Knight, Mask playing for GW and Joshi playing for Tizen. So who does uh, Joshi play then? Because I know who uh, Mask Knight plays for. Uh, like, I have not. I have not been watching Joshi's sets. I've mostly just been um, facilitating GW's sets. So. Okay. I know as much as you do. I can't wait to see what characters we have in store. Oh, yeah. As the icon actually suggests, it is actually Greninja. <laughs> wow, who would have guessed? Hmm. Not me. But Okay, so the eight so both both uh schools have at least one set in and a in a two O favor. So it's gonna, it's gonna be interesting to see how they you know, break this tie. Oh yeah. This is actually going to be very bad for Little Mac if he's even thrown off stage once, though. The water is actually so horrible for him. So he has to be very careful with how he recovers each and every time. 
Okay, so again, we're starting off our sets with Final Destination and Mask Knight is jumping in with the counters. I think he knows yeah. that he's trying to just smash attack. Powering through that F still with the F smash. He says he's scary thing about, That's the thing about, that's the thing about oh, no. scary about Little Mac. Kind of just get oh, blown yeah. up just for thinking he got him. <gasps> oh oh no, it's, L I, I felt like I was going to disconnect there, but I saw the stream disconnect. So right now what's happening, Mass Knight actually Mass takes Knight the stock. getting the first stock. Yeah. Okay, KO Punch on deck. Unfortunately, okay. the stream was disconnected, so uh, currently, for the viewers right now, all you can do is just wait until we tell the results. <laughs> is that lobby still up? or? Yeah, the yes, lobby's still is. up. It is still up. But you won't be able to spectate until after the game's done, which is unfortunate. Okay, so yeah, I, I don't really see it any damage being tacked onto Mass Knight at the moment. Okay, so what's interesting is we're starting off on Final Destination again. Uh, I think you know it's pretty. It's kind of like common knowledge that like Little Mac does really well on this stage, considering his of air course. game is pretty much the weakest in the game. So he yeah. just likes to stay on the ground. No platforms. That means you know no air game for him. Which is and fine. no camping too. What about Greninja? I don't have too much knowledge on Greninja in this game. Uh, so Greninja is actually very good on Final Destination as well because he can do a lot of tech chase traps with dash attack and to like drag down up air, and then he can continue oh, that on. Josh, he's landing right into a charge down smash. <laughs> I think oh, it's like man. a common thing that we're. A common thing that we're seeing in these sets is like a lot of these players are kind of landing pretty sketchy. They're either landing in hopes of just trying to land an aerial, or they're landing, right. you know, just in a really vulnerable position. And that's kind of the thing about uh, Smash Bros. is whenever you're above an opponent, it's usually a bad thing because right. your options are your options are limited, especially if you don't have a jump anymore. And usually, most characters have very good anti airs, and they have more options than you do. Right. Oh yeah, of course. Never want to lock your down, uh, lock yourself down to like one option at a time. You want to make sure you have everything that you're available to. You. Yeah. But right now, <laughs> Joshi's struggling to get all his options out as he's just spamming down smash at oh. And it's it's kind of strange how it's working, considering that uh, when you're dealing with online, sometimes there's input delay, so you're not always going to be on top of things to react and punish. Right. It's a completely different game online. Yeah. Oh, man, he almost died from that, though. Oh, Mass Knight just barely off on the timing for the down smash. It is a little smart of Joshi to be using the side beat to recover so that he's yeah. able to hit Mass Knight out of the smash attacks. But he but ends up just jumping attack. right into a smash attack right there. And he, uh, Mass Knight ends up taking the game. Okay. I'm not sure if uh, either of them would want to actually move away from this stage. This feels like a comfortable pick for both characters, but... Uh, I mean, unless um, Joshi picks a different character. Right, right. Let's see. Okay, maybe I'll, maybe I'll check on which stage that they're planning on choosing. Right. Yeah, Are we, so, the, the, so we're tied just, up right? uh, one one. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, it's one oh, zero. Yeah, one zero. Oh, that was Mass the first match. Yes. So, as we're waiting for them, just remember to support the GDOE Varsity Esports League. Currently, we are going through it and seeing if this stream works out well. And uh, as usual, as every other tournament online has been, uh, we've had a bit of just uh, connections here and there. Yeah, currently in this you know quarantine, you know time period, there's really not much you can do about it. But you know, just keep pushing forward. All right, so it looks like we're gonna start off with our second game. I believe their stage choice was Pokemon Stadium Two. Okay, that's a sudden change. I don't know about going to this stage as 
Greninja doesn't really Greninja. benefit too much, yeah. I feel I like... I think it might just be more of an anti-Mac thing than really it's like a, okay, I play Greninja, I can benefit from the stage. Right. Maybe the thing that he can benefit from is really just um, tech chasing uh, when he gets him onto a platform, but that's really it. Yeah, as Besides you can see, Joshi team... doing a good thing, just waiting on the platform while Master Knight was charging his smash attack. Because uh, a lot of the times, when you're on Final Destination, all you can really do is just sit on the opposite side. But with, when you're oh, on man. a platform, then you at least have a little, you have a, you know, you have a better angle. A bit of leeway, yeah. Okay, he goes for the jab, jab, four smash, catches the air dodge too. Ooh. Uh, throwing out a substitute. Wow, like, Ooh, landing that's... on the stage instead of grabbing for the ledge, I don't know if that had to do anything with the connection. Or any Maybe. input delay. But yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, that's being like, at the ledge versus Lil Mac is a lot scarier than people might give credit for. Oh yeah, he's actually some of his scariest when he's at ledge there, honestly. But he actually gets down to onto up smash, a true combo, and it kills. Oh, not even the red lightning. Yeah. Gets the, <laughs> just throws in a taunt. I don't know if it was like out of respect. Yeah, that was out of respect, I'm sure. <laughs> he doesn't really... <laughs> oh man. Right now, they're actually just throwing hands, though. <laughs> <laughs> this is a boxing match, for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, catching catching his jump with a jab. Oh, that was oh. so close. <laughs> he got caught at the very ends of his gloves. <laughs> yeah, if he was using a down smash instead of a smash, he probably would have got him. Oh, yeah. Oh, now he's just going with dash attack. He the says, label, okay, play, I need label, this. Please play. give this to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, catching him with the, the awkward hit of up smash. <gasps> oh, no, I oh, think so close. Uh, that was so close. Yeah. Oh, he needs to get away right now. Okay. Oh, that was let, so close. Yeah, let's let let it lose. Get stopped by the... Okay, this time is the kill. Get yeah. stopped. Barely gets stopped by the the uh, <laughs> water shuriken. Oh, jab block? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Jab... I think there could have been, <laughs> been a lot more he... I think there could have been, like, much more that he could have gone for after the jab block. Oh yeah, for sure. He could have definitely went for uh, down tilt into up air drag down stuff. He could have comboed him across stage with it. But yeah, but instead... I yeah, it might have been just the the online factor. Yeah, but the the fourth smash wasn't a bad idea just to get him off stage. Ah, uh, not oh so soon on the counter and he doesn't punish it. But he has KO punch. He can actually take this game back with two hits. Uh, that's yeah, one right hit. now, no right <laughs> now he's at death percent actually. <gasps> yeah. Oh, uh... <laughs> he, he called it. He was at death percent. Running up, no fear at all. Oh yeah, he definitely made sure that Greninja could not run around him for free. Oh my goodness. So right, that is so. What... Mass Knight is going to take that two zero, and GW yeah. is going to take this uh, session. 2-1. Congratulations. I believe for... beforehand, I don't think Tiza never lost a set. I think they've been 3 0 most of their... I think they've been 3-0-ing all their opponents. Oh, yeah. Congratulations to GW on this one, actually. Barely taking over uh, Tizen, but it was it looked really close in a few of the matches that we've had. It also looked really... It looked really rough in the beginning for GW, but they were, the rest of the team was able to pick it back up. Oh yeah, for sure. Barely picked up the scraps, but hey, you do what you can as a team, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we have another team coming up that we're actually gonna record? Okay, I'm not sure if we're going to be commentating on another set, because I, I think all the sets are going on right now as we're speaking, so they yeah. could also be just wrapping up. I can, I can try to find us one more set, uh, if we can okay. hang tight for a little bit. Uh, All right, gonna see if we can find one. You guys can chat for a bit. Let me get us a set. All right. Yeah, I was honestly really worried with uh, what happened after the first set with GW. The next, the next label play. Next label play. It it looked way too. Well, yeah, it was definitely really close. Was, it wasn't pretty. Set. It wasn't pretty for Matthew. Yeah. But that's again, Renin is just really, really powerful player. Top ten on Guam. Yeah, very knowledgeable too. I ended up taking him under my wing so he could learn so much more. He he studies, man. He picks the books with his characters. Oh for yeah, sure. oh yeah. Okay. 
what other teams do we have currently at right now? Who who's playing and where the scores? Let me take a look. Okay. Meet room one still open right now. Uh... Okay, so just just uh, just as a reminder, uh, these the way that these uh, sessions are going to be going, the, the way that these sessions are going to be happening, is that uh, as you can see, two teams are going up against each other. They have three players each. They go up against each player goes up against each other in a best of three. And then obviously you, you, you see how it turned out, you know, 2 0 2 2 So overall, GW won 2 1. Right. So the way this is going to work is it's all built like a round robin style bracket. And once all the round robin matches are complete, we're going to be doing a playoffs at the end of the month. And depending on the, uh, how, well you, how well the team does in the round robin, that, kind of, that determines their seeding in the single elimination playoffs. And then that's when the deciding matches are happening. Right. Oh my goodness. I, I didn't expect things to turn out as they did in the matches. I, I don't know what I expected, but uh, I felt that it would have been closer between uh, Machu and Renan if Machu ended up composing himself. Yeah, you could definitely rank, maybe. You could definitely see the nerves in it. Yeah. Um but yeah, his his teammates definitely helped take care of everything else though. And gladly for them, of course. But who else do we have here? Hold on. Oh, you're in a different room now? <laughs> yeah, it looks like uh Ken's like in a different room right now. All right, okay. Let's actually see if we can hop into that one then. Yeah, this is uh, Sanchez versus JFK. So, sorry, I had to just switch it up a bit. Uh, what's the arena ID? Um, it is 44P5X. Okay. And the stream yeah, is I'll just be watching, one, two, I'll just be watching the footage. Oh, here we go. Now this is the okay, final so match the according to Art Pulse, one of our officials. This is the GDOE Varsity League, and this is the fourth meet. So they've already, uh, all the teams have had three rounds of play already. We're about halfway through. Uh, like Ike was saying earlier, there are nine rounds of play with every team getting a bye. And we have um, Sticks representing Sanchez. Uh, he's using Cloud and Element from JFK, I believe, and he's using Sheik. And for no, whatever reason, like a... we don't have audio. <laughs> so... Oh, yeah, no that's... audio. <laughs> that's fine. But hey, guys, you know what? Our... This is why we troubleshoot. You know what I mean? We're going to have right, audio next course. time. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Oh, so, almost getting the finishing touch. Uh, this is yeah, kind of like personal bias through. for me, but I always thought like <laughs> Cloud's a really cool character. Uh, in this matchup specifically, I don't know. I think Cloud has the edge. Uh, okay, no pun intended, but I think he has the edge in this ah. in this matchup, mostly because of that <laughs> that that really powerful hitting sword, and also the fact that Sheik just has like you know, a lot of trouble getting that final oh. kill, and it's also that uh, X factor of the limit where he just blow just blows you up at whatever percent. Okay, jumping into the cross slash. Yeah, it's a... right when you mentioned limit too, but I feel like <laughs> it might actually be maybe close to even because Sheik. When she gets one hit off of someone and they're off stage, oh, you better hope that she doesn't catch your jump, or you oh, might yeah, actually say a, goodbye to that stock. <laughs> that's a very good point. It's also like a uh, cloud. Also, him, cloud himself doesn't have the best, uh, you know, Cover uh, options. That and also like a, uh, I guess close quarters. He's mostly like a mid-ranged fighter. Yeah. So when someone gets in his space, this is kind of a common trend with most sword characters. When you get into their face, into their own space, like you put them outside of their comfort zone, they really cannot do anything. Yeah, because they have nowhere to swing. They don't really have fast enough moves for that usually. So, okay. Yeah. Now. Because that's the thing. That's the thing about ooh, landing right into the blade beam. Again, this is kind of a current thing that we're this. Sorry, this is kind of a recurring thing that we're seeing a lot is a lot of these players kind of want to just jump in and already get back into the action and they just get blown up for it 
And yeah. the thing about fighting games is you can't always play the way you want to play. There's a there's a rhythm. There's a uh, there's a tempo that you have to abide by in order to play like you know really safe. Exactly. <laughs> he just got there. double four there. Uh, I'm I was sure, almost uh, uh, the wrong please. character. Please. That's a sheep, please, that's a sheep thing. One. Yeah. <laughs> he almost got it, but oh my goodness, he's actually. Oh, if he chases him it. here, but he doesn't. <laughs> he's just jabbing him in his face. Okay, just why? Did he just. Six just walked up to him, rolled back, and shielded. Yeah. Oh, he barely oh. gets hit by that up B, though, out of shield. He needs to take advantage of him off stage, and he goes for an up for a bouncing fish, taking the stock. This can actually go one of two ways right now. It's either he. Um, element quickly um, gets taken out right now, or. Uh, he ends up actually taking his opponent's stock Three, with gimp. a few hits. Yeah, with a gimp. Uh, but that limit is almost on deck. He has to be careful. He has oh. to start playing a little carefully. Oh, yeah. Okay, limit on board. Okay, okay. Let's it rip it. immediately. I don't agree don't with that. that. Yeah, he was actually just too hasty there. He. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dash is back on. Dash, Dash is on him. <laughs> Moving on him. <laughs> Goes for that raw up smash. Oh man, you could tell he was really scared too. The moment he ran up to him, you could see his shield flicker. <laughs> oh my goodness, he takes the game right there. It felt a lot closer than uh, it, than what it could have been. I felt like uh, there was a bit of pressure that. Uh, wasn't exactly. What's it called? Wasn't Odd exactly point. kept the entire point. Yeah, the, the entire game throughout. But if if only the sheik kept moving towards Cloud and didn't uh, hesitate so much, then maybe uh, she could have actually taken the stock on that last game. So that I mean, this is that was the last game between. Um... Sanchez and JFK, I think. I think that ended that particular set. There are two other matches going on. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to end it for meet number three for us. But join us back here next week, Wednesday, when we stream another featured match. Uh, thank you to Kai and Sly, the commentary duo, dropping the knowledge and, and helping <laughs> us out here. And hopefully next week we have some game sound. That'll help a little bit, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, anyways, you guys are watching the Varsity GDOE Varsity Esports League powered by Laddie Esports. We have a bunch of different tournaments and games coming out. Our League of Legends League starts tomorrow. So tomorrow night at 9 p.m. will feature the first of many games every Saturday at 9 p.m. League of Legends action right here. And of course, more GDOE Varsity League Smash action um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday for the month of May. So definitely check it out. We'll catch you guys next time.